Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we're going to be looking at voltage-operated earth leakage circuit breakers. These. Or these things. Now these haven't been used for 30-odd uh, years uh, for various reasons, and they were actually removed from the regulations uh, in the early 1980s. Sadly, there's still a number of these out there in operation. If you've actually got one of these in your house, it's high time it was replaced. They're not particularly useful these days, and they have a number of uh, defects, which we'll uh, look at in a separate video. This is the Crabtree one. Uh, it's obviously missing its uh, covers there, but uh, that's the Crabtree one. They also had red buttons, as well as this uh, yellow one. And the Chilton one uh, was the other major common type. They all looked uh, pretty much the same with that huge uh, yellow uh, test bar along the top there. Now, just for the avoidance of doubt, these things are not RCDs such as this. They're a totally different device altogether. This is what you would have in your modern consumer unit. Nothing wrong with these. In fact, you should have uh, at least two of these uh, in your house. One at a bare minimum. Although these things have a test button, they work in a totally different way. And uh, they're not something you want in your house anymore because say, they do have a number of uh, fairly severe defects and problems uh, in their operation. Now, I'm not going to look at those two today. We'll do that in a separate video. I thought it might be more interesting to look at this one. This is substantially older, and this one appears to have never been used as it's got no uh, holes or cutouts in it whatsoever. So we'll see uh, if we can actually get this to work, what it looks like inside, and uh, sort of description of how these things are supposed to operate. Now all of these devices uh, work in the same way, and it's quite simple. They uh, monitor the earth connection to the installation, and if the voltage gets to 50 volts or above, then they're supposed to trip off and disconnect the supply. Note this is totally different from the modern RCD, which is a current operated device. This measures the current in and out, and if there's any imbalance there, will disconnect. These will protect people. These do not. Um, that's one reason why, of course, they were removed from service. Now this particular one is considerably older than those uh, Crabtree and Chilton types uh, showed before. There's no date on the thing, but uh, it's only rated to 30 amps, which uh, these days, of course, is a pretty feeble type of supply for a property. The whole styling of it is obviously from many decades ago. I so say this one appears to have never been used, as it's uh, totally uh, undamaged. There's no holes for wiring to enter anywhere. Now, of course, this is the sort of item which uh, is rare. Those Chilton and Crabtree ones can be picked up uh, almost anywhere. So, of course, here's another one, uh, just to prove how rare they're not. This is virtually identical, except it's rated to 50 amps there. And it's in a bit of a state. Uh, the front's rather tarnished, and uh, it's got a few uh, chips and knocks around the sides of it there. Now, so there's no date on these, but they are located in uh, this catalogue. Now, the... Uh, 15 amp one here at the bottom is actually this one. They're just down at the bottom there. 11 shillings, and uh, which was quite a lot of money at the time. This catalogue is from 1935. Uh, this one, there is actually a 30 amp one listed here, but it's not actually this catalogue number, but uh, it's essentially it's the same uh, styling and device. So talking about the 1930s for these uh, devices, made by the General Electric Company. That's the... Uh, English one, of course, not the uh, American one of a similar name. Right, so let's have a look inside. Now, the front is secured by these two screws, which uh, let's undo those. Now, notice there's a little hole uh, actually drilled through there. That's for a sealing wire. This would typically be used for the main uh, switch coming into the property, and it would normally be sealed by the electricity company so that people didn't tamper with it and get free electricity. A uh, cover there is just a Bakelite uh, piece. That's a metal plate on the front there, just secured with those uh, bent over tabs in the bottom. Base is also a uh, moulded Bakelite. Now this is only a single pole device. Uh, we can see the uh, main contact there. So it just uh, presses together like that. And then when it trips off, uh, it just springs apart. One interesting aspect of these is they have to be operated in the correct uh, vertical position there, because if you put it this way up, you can't actually reset the thing, because it relies on gravity to uh, move the various parts into the correct position. 
So main switch uh, on the front there, just the contact, there's a resistor in the back there. And at the bottom here you can see there's a coil, it's not entirely obvious but that's actually just a coil of wire. And that's the coil which if you put uh, 50 volts across that should be uh, powerful enough then to uh, pull down this tripping bar. And that theoretically should uh, cause the device to switch off. Terminals we've got obviously the incoming uh, supply and the outgoing supply and again it's only a single pole so uh, only two of those. And the other two terminals are the earth coming from the installation and then the other one going out to the earth electrode or earth rod in the ground. The coil is connected between those two terminals and say so if you get more than 50 volts across it that's when it should trip. Now this one is probably very similar. I haven't actually looked inside this one but just open it and look. Again the same two uh, fixing screws with a hole in. Okay so it's basically uh, the same design there. This is only rated to 15 amps so presumably the contacts are slightly smaller or something but uh, again there's a resistor in the back there that's a rather nasty uh, looking example. And again we've got the coil at the bottom there sort of a green uh, covering on that one. Terminals at the exact same positions and basically it uh, looks to be exactly the same other than it's a 15 amp one instead of a 30. And so the coil uh, at the bottom here is what does the actual uh, sensing as it were. It simply uh, connects between the uh, installation earth and the electrode in the ground and if more than 50 volts or so uh, appears across here the magnetic field is then strong enough to pull down this bar and that obviously uh, trips the uh, main lever and disconnects the supply. Uh, the other component in here is this resistor. Now this is actually for testing purposes and it's all to do with this uh, little button here. Normally of course the uh, earth is connected through across the coil. However what this resistor does basically is uh, if you press it it disconnects the uh, earth side and then reconnects it via this resistor so it puts an appropriate voltage across there just to make sure that it does actually trip. And that's just a rod that goes through to the back to uh, press on a uh, contact in the back there and it's basically a changeover contact from one side. So in the normal position it's there and if it's pressed over it goes across and then obviously connects to the uh, resistor. Resistor's only there really just to uh, limit the uh, current flowing through that coil. So obviously you connect that across the full mains it's likely to have a heat and uh, smoke and sound fire. Now before we go shoving uh, voltages into this device we'll just check that the uh, thing is uh, in the realms of sensibility. So we'll just check this uh, resistor in here. Okay so 3.4k that's uh, certainly within the realms of possibility. Now the coil uh, we may have to uh, do a bit further dismantling here to uh, actually get in there so uh, let's see if we can just undo some additional screws. So there we go. So on the back there you can see that fairly clearly here's the uh, coil connections and again there's that changeover connection in the center there so that when the uh, test button is pressed it's either connected onto that back terminal which is this one here or in the testing position it's then disconnected from there and then connected via the uh, actual incoming supply and the resistor just to apply a moderate voltage across there. In theory uh, 50 volts of course. So let's check the resistance of the coil. So I'm going to go from this terminal there to the uh, center. There's a 96.8 so sort of approximately 100 ohms or something that's uh, again certainly uh, reasonable. At least it's not shorted or uh, open circuit. Obviously, either of those would be a possible fail. And say so on the front here, this is the uh, trip bar, which would uh, press down and uh, presumably trip the device. I guess it does go eventually. It's not uh, desperately reliable, but yeah, it needs quite a. Uh, 
pounding to uh, actually trip the thing. Now, I said this hasn't been used, but actually it may have been because there are some uh, small holes on the back here, which uh, it's certainly possible that the wiring could have entered there. Bearing in mind it's only 30 amps, so the wiring would actually be quite thin. Whether those were drilled up by somebody or uh, actually came as a factory uh, manufactured thing, of course we'll uh, never know. Now I've just wired this up uh, with a couple of uh, wires here and I've actually put these directly across the coil at the bottom so I don't particularly want to be uh, pressing test button with uh, live parts exposed and ultimately it's only the uh, tripping function we're going to be looking at anyway. I mean the resistor is intact so presumably it would do its thing. Uh, voltage will be displayed here and uh, I'll just uh, slowly increase the voltage from zero and again if this is working properly we should see it trip out at around the 50 volts mark. Okay, so uh, power's on there, just at one or two volts showing. Well, that was a fairly unsuccessful test there. As you heard, it made a bit of a chattering and buzzing noise, as you would expect, being uh, AC, of course. Uh, we got up to about 80 volts there, and it didn't uh, want to go. So, uh, see. it's pulling the magnet in. Well, as you heard in that uh, previous test, it uh, certainly uh, is actually working in terms of being an electromagnet. Uh, the buzz, obviously, because it's on an AC uh, supply. So if I just turn up the voltage, you can see that bar will actually move. But uh, unfortunately, the uh, tripping mechanism is probably jammed or sticky or something, and. Uh, doesn't seem to want to go uh, even hitting it with a screwdriver but uh, anyway the principles there you can see it uh, pulls the bar in fairly well and that normally would of course uh, activate the uh, trip uh, thing above there but uh, obviously due to its extensive age it's uh, a bit sticky Okay, well it pulls in about 20 volts there, so that's uh, well within the uh, 50 volts uh, that it would probably have been designed for. So that's a look at the uh, GEC ELF uh, voltage operated uh, earth leakage circuit breaker. So probably from the uh, late 1930s or possibly uh, early 1940s. It doesn't appear to work uh, at all, but at least the uh, magnet part uh, seems to work and the uh, trip bar does actually pull down even if the mechanism itself is uh, pretty much stuck up and uh, jammed there. So all the newer ones uh, worked in the same way, the uh, Crabtree and uh, Chilton ones, and I'll do a separate video on those and uh, also a more technical explanation of how these things actually work and why they're not actually used anymore. Until next time, thanks for watching.